Hey guys, Mix here, and in today's video, we are back once again with the Corvette. And in last video, we took this thing out for a very successful cruise after going ahead and tuning everything and getting this thing really running right. But the sad news was when we took this thing for inspection, it failed really, really bad. And I do have the list of everything. And if you guys didn't see last video, it just real quick failed because the parking brake doesn't work, the headlights, the turn signals, the license plate light, the power steering leak, left front brake caliper leaking, and no horn. So today we're gonna be trying to fix as much of those as we can to get this thing road worthy. Two of those things on the list are already checked off. The turn signals do work, but only when the car is running. So I think maybe you just had the car with key on engine off and maybe that's why, but they do work. I actually checked them just before and it does have a horn. It's not here, but it's right here. And that should just be able to pass inspection just because you probably didn't know what this button was. And I didn't know what it was for the longest time either. But what I wanna go ahead and start off with is the headlights. And as you guys can see, I already went ahead and took out this side. This side already works. It's just the driver's side that never really worked. So I went ahead and I took them out and I was able to just go to AutoZone and get replacement ones. One of them is three prong and one of them is two prong. So I had to make sure to uh, know that, but they do seem to be pretty much the same size. So I don't think we should have any issues mounting them up, but I do want to start there. And hopefully it's not like a circuit issue with like the wiring and everything that would really suck. Hopefully it's just old bulbs. So guys, with that being said, let's just start off with that real quick and uh, we'll move on and start grinding out all these problems. So guys, I just finished up putting on the new headlights, just like that. So now let's go ahead and uh, turn them on. Hopefully we got power. Oh yeah. All right, so both sides are working. Now let me throw on the high beams. Heck yeah, just like that. All right, so we're gonna check that one off the list. All right, so next thing I wanna do is start trying to figure out why the brake lights are not working. They used to work, I'm pretty sure, if I'm remembering right. But what I wanna look at is, I'll get under here. Oh, and right there is the brake light switch. So what I wanna do is pull off this connector and use my multimeter to test continuity with the switch. So that switch is normally open, but when you go ahead and press down the brake pedal, there's a little bezel right there that comes out. So there you can just see it pop out right there. Then that's when it closes the circuit and the brake lights should turn on. So I'm just gonna pop off the connector, put the prong on each one, and I'm gonna go ahead and press down the brake pedal. And if it starts beeping, then the switch should be functioning. So they're both on. Now I'm gonna press down the brake pedal, see what happens. All right. Yep, we got a bad switch. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just order a new one right now. I'm probably just gonna do like a Napa or AutoZone like next day delivery thing or pick up in store. Maybe if I could get one today. But when I pressed on the brake pedal, it should have made the noise because the circuit closed, which finishes the circuit and puts power to the brake light, so. All right, so right now I'm just removing the uh, switch real quick. It's super easy, just two nuts that basically just lock together between a plate. And once it's out, I think I'm gonna test it just one more time just to make sure, but I'm pretty sure that the switch is just bad. So guys, the switch is out and before it was plugged into this bottom one and this has two different plugs. I'm pretty sure they're for two different things, but I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate. So each connector is on a terminal. If I go ahead and press down the thing, nothing happens. But if I go ahead and put them on the back one, the one that it wasn't plugged onto, and I press down the thing like the brake pedal's going down, we have continuity. So that end seems to be working and it seems to be working perfect. So what I think I'm gonna do is just plug this up real quick on this side and don't, not like mount it up and everything, but just plug it in. And when I turn on the key, the brake light should be on. And if I push this down, the brake light should go out in theory, if everything's working. As you guys just saw, the brake lights do in fact work, which is good. That means that the wiring's good. But I think when I said that, you know, each of these prongs do different things, this one seems to be opposite of what it should be. So when it's out like this, the brake light should be on because that means that the brake pedal was pushed down and released from it. When it's like this, the brake lights are off. But when I push it down as if the brake lights come back, then the brake lights go on. So that's a little weird. But I'm definitely happy that I know that the uh, wiring and everything's good. 
but I'm gonna go ahead and get the another brake switch so it could go ahead and put it on the right connector that it needs to be on so it's not inverted and <laughs> weird. So guys, I actually just got back from AutoZone and I was able to pick up a brake light switch, but uh, as you guys can see, it is a different design than the other one, but I did bring my multimeter and asked if I could test it and they let me. So it did have continuity when it was like this, which the other one didn't. So when the brake pedal was pushed down, it didn't have continuity. But then when the brake valve was released, it did. So this is the right one. So let's go ahead and just install it real quick. Then we should have brake lights. The new uh, brake switch is now on. So now I'm gonna go ahead and test it out. Right now the brake is up. I'm gonna go ahead and press down the brake right now. Brake is now up. Brake is down. Brake is up. Brake is down. So guys, right now I'm gonna be needing to end it off here for tonight. I did get a really late start to today. That's just because I was working on the video that you guys last saw. But tomorrow we're gonna try and get done the rest of the stuff that needs to happen. So we can go ahead and uh, get this thing reinspected, and it should pass this time. So with that being said, I'll see you all tomorrow. So guys, we are back here the next morning and we're just gonna jump straight into getting this thing ready for the road. Yesterday we left off with getting the uh, rear brake lights working and the headlights. Now I just want to go ahead and check out the rear uh, license plate light. I've never actually even looked at it before. I'm just going to turn on the headlights and let's see. Yep, does not work. So I'm just going to pop out these two screws and that should uh, release what's holding in the bulb and I'll check it out. Just got the uh, two screws out and the whole uh, thing came out. So I should just be able to untwist this. So the bulb is most definitely shot, but... <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and just test for power at the circuit, just, you know, before we go out and buy ourselves a new bulb. We do have some sort of power going to the connection. It's not 12 volts or not even close to 12 volts, but this may not require 12 volts to light up the uh, bulb, but I actually might have the same bulb. I just gotta go check, but I'll plug it in and uh, see if it lights up if I do have it. If not, then we'll go ahead out and uh, buy a new one. All right, so I got what seems to be a match. Goes in there, so now let me go turn on the lights and see if it goes on. We got a license plate light. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reinstall it back up above the license plate and we can move on to the next thing. We're moving right along. <laughs> so next up, what we're gonna be doing is trying to tighten up the handbrake. So this little cable, little adjuster right here is what I used to adjust it. And it's basically just two nuts and I need to move them towards the front of the car. So it's gonna be a little hard to do this, but what I need to do first is put the handbrake up two notches and then I can begin moving it up. Hopefully it moves because it does look pretty rusted. So one, two. Typically I put the handbrake all the way up and it does absolutely nothing. So hopefully this adjustment just helps and I won't have to do uh, the rear shoes. finished up adjusting it so i'm just gonna go ahead put it down completely right now and right now the wheel spins perfect so before when i put the e-brake completely up it would still roll even in the driveway so usually i put it in gear so now let's see oh yeah wow i still have all that way to go and it's already feeling really tight right here oh yeah all right that's that's really good and i could go way higher too don't want to make it too tight so that is awesome so I'm gonna put it on the ground and just really test it to see if it'll roll. So now that the car is on the ground, I'm gonna go ahead and sit in it and I should start rolling. All right, yep, so I'm rolling now. Let's pull the e-brake. Oh yeah, it does something now. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely good. Let me release it quick. Oh my God, yeah. Oh, now I gotta push this thing back forward. Alrighty guys, so now that we got all of that taken care of, now it is time to check out the left front brake caliper. I'm not gonna bother recording me taking off the wheel and taking off the caliper just cause you guys have seen that already. Cause these are new calipers, but for whatever reason, Corvette calipers like to really just seep through if they're not used. And after I put them on, the car did sit, you know, for a couple weeks before it got on the road. So that's probably why. So I'll catch you guys back once we get off the wheel and I will start inspecting the caliper. Alrighty guys, so I got the wheel off and it is obvious that this thing is leaking. The wheel, as you can see, is wet and it's been like splattered all around. And if I take my finger and put it right under here where the caliper is, 
it's covered in brake fluid. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and it should be covered under warranty and I'll go ahead and get the new one on. along with the new copper gasket the size I need is in there so just got that so let's head back now and uh, finish this thing up is now on the uh, brake lines all tied up so what i'm just going to do real quick off camera just bleed them and i'm going to throw on the wheel and then uh that should be it so guys the wheel is back on all torqued down the car is back on the ground and this thing is done everything that the mechanic said it needed besides just the power steering leak which he's going to do with the power steering control valve i'm really not going to be able to do that in my driveway but everything else everything that's on that list has been cranked out so I'm gonna be rescheduling a uh, inspection and this time it should pass. Fingers crossed that it doesn't decide to break something else now. But with that being said, I'm gonna be ending it off here. Follow my social medias. They'll be on the outro of, of this video, Instagram and Snapchat, I use the most. Post a comment down below and uh, pray for this thing that it does pass inspection. Definitely should now, but thanks for watching. Please subscribe and comment to our Facebook channel.